Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IAS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 17th May 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is given by Buddha. Buddha says, stand alone is better than walking with wrong people. So stand alone is better than walking with a wrong people. So this quote is very, very apt for UPSC aspirants because in this UPSC preparation, so you will be staying in PG or hostels and you will be going outside for the tea stalls, especially during this uh, prelims times or whenever the exam it is very much here, you will be coming across number of people in this tea stall and sometimes they will be having some negative impact on our preparation. For example, if you are talking about so how much uh, you completed, so how many tests you have given, so how many marks you are getting. So if you are talking about this, so if you are getting less than compared to that of your friends, then what have it will be having some negative impact on your preparation. So here stand alone. It is better than comparing uh, to the top of walking with a wrong people. Okay, so this is the quote. And now I want to give you one small suggestion. Brilliance really, is very, very near. So please try to avoid meeting negative people around you. So try to meet the positive people and try to improve your skills and try to improve your preparation strategy and try to give at least one full test every day so that the in, uh, clearing of this UPS prelims chances will be very high. So now let us try to see first topic it is regarding India's geopolitical options. So here because of this Russia Ukraine crisis so what are the geopolitical options you are present with India so we are going to discuss that. So actually we are going to talk about growing Chinese challenge and we are also going to talk about India's presence in West Asia and as well as Afghanistan. So these are the two important dimensions which are mainly discussed in this article. And this topic is important from your international relations point of view which mainly comes under your GS paper too. And this topic is important from your mains point of view not from prelims much. So if you are talking about India's geopolitical options. So now as you all know Russia Ukraine crisis is going on. So since February 24 onwards on this February 24th Russia invaded Ukraine. So it is now almost three months. So uh, this is uh, regarding this Russia Ukraine war. Okay. So what was initially assumed in this New Delhi it is to be a quick confrontation between Russia and as well as Ukraine and the war in Europe is now raging on with no end in sight with long term implication yet known. So due to this co this Russia Ukraine crisis due to this Russia Ukraine war so what will be the long term implication that is no one known okay that is unknown. So for several weeks. During the late March and April, it mainly seemed that though the Ukraine war presented a numerous geopolitical options for New Delhi to choose from. So because of this Russia-Ukraine crisis, so in number of, uh, uh, number of international organizations, for example, you can talk about United Nations Security Council, you can talk about United Nations Human Rights Council. So whenever the resolutions are passed, so India mainly abstain from the voting here. So due to this Russia-Ukraine war, so it mainly presented number of geopolitical options of Delhi because we also came up with uh, getting of discounted oil from this Russia and even we are going to increase our exports of wheat. Okay, so these are some important things that we can talk about regarding the geopolitical options for New Delhi. So whenever Russia Ukraine crisis is happening, if if India it is not supporting Russia means so Russia which is mainly moving towards China, right? So as you all know, we are mainly sharing boundary with China. Already at this line of actual control, we are facing some confrontation. And if you see on another side, we have Pakistan. So this Pakistan, it is all weather friend of China, right? Along this LOC and along this Kashmir also, we are having some issues. So because of this here, now at present, so whatever the choices which are provided by these uh, geopolitical options or regarding this Russia-Ukraine crisis for India, they were now very much limited, okay? So enhancing of Delhi's ability to make strategic choices in the border region. So Ukraine war may actually limit. Okay, so what are the war which is happening? So actually this war which is mainly limiting the options to are present with India. 
okay so now let us try to see three important things okay so here what are the important reasons for the limiting of options we are going to see that so first important reason here is as you all know russia russia it is a strategic partner so russia it is an important strategic partner of india so we are going to get number of defense equipments with the high end technology from this russia and even during this india indo pakistan war okay that happened okay that happened in india so what happened in that time also russia which mainly supported india but not us right so russia as a key strategic partner is no longer available to india for balancing purposes here okay because this russia which is mainly moving towards this a china and apart from that if you are talking about russia sudden absence from the asian balance of power equations has further enhanced chinese influences in the region so what happened because of absence of this uh, uh, asian balance of power equations so actually you know that during this cold war time during 1960s there were two flower blocks which mainly formed so on one side we have us and one side you have ussr right so what happened at that time we came up with this non alignment movement that is nam so this nam which is mainly having relevance today so what is the relevance of this nam today so you may also get question regarding this nam this year means right so what happened because of this russia ukraine crisis so because of this sudden absence of russia in this asian balance of power equations that mainly increased increase the china influence in the region okay so this is a one important thing and the power balance which is mainly moved towards towards this favor of china and the third important reason here is if you are talking about us and its western partners they are mainly interested in this ukraine russia ukraine issue now okay so because of this here now us focus on this china had already been hit so because of this that led to increasing of influence of china in this indo pacific region in this indo pacific region there is increasing of influence of this china because of this decrease because of this decrease in the interest of this us and western powers okay in this china and they mainly shifted towards this russia ukraine conflict now so now what is the dilemma of india so india's biggest dilemma it is to continue its engagement with russia or not whether we can continue with the uh, with our, uh, our engagement with russia or not or whether we need to shift towards usa so this is the one of the biggest dilemma that we are mainly facing now so if we are talking about growing china's challenge yes managing the chinese challenge continues to be the one of the biggest cause of concern for india so actually this you uh, ukraine okay this ukraine and russia conflict ukraine russia conflict which mainly strengthened and even revitalized us led military and as well as political coalition globally so because of this what happened that led to weakening of uh, weakening of american influence in this southern uh, southern asian nations especially that led to increasing of influence of china so if you are talking about in concern of india so what is the concern of india so across lac region so there is confrontation that is mainly seen between india and china and there is no stand off and there is no status quo which is mainly seen here still stand off which is mainly seen here so any when we went for number of rounds of talks between india and china but they didn't fetch the complete status quo in this region so this is one important thing regarding this lac if if you are talking about chinese side they are mainly taking advantage of this ukraine distraction that also leading to heating up at the cell lac region line, line of actual control region india would have to turn to west and us for the support okay so whenever there is no proper resolution between india and china regarding this lac region so if you want to approach towards this western countries like usa then that will be hurting india and russia relations so that here we can request beijing not to activate this uh, not to activate this lac region while ukraine war it is still going on so this is one of the thing that we can do here so we are talking about kashmir's issue so india's india's presence in this north western continental strategy especially regarding this afghanistan and as well as some central asian countries it is also complicating because of this ukraine war so because of this ukraine war india's presence in this northwestern continent uh, that is regarding afghanistan and central asia which is also affecting so on the face of it 
and for the time being things seems to be advantageous to India. So what happened for the times of now across this LOC region with Pakistan? So it is mainly calm and the violence in this Kashmir also had been calmed down. So what are the primary reasons behind this uh, calmness in this LOC region as well as Kashmir region? Because Pakistan was at first busy in consolidating its gains from the return to Taliban's. So actually what happened Afghanistan which mainly came under the control of Taliban's now. So after once this Taliban's came into power, here Pakistan which is very much busy with consolidating like what are the gains that is that it is going to get from this Taliban's. And also they are dealing with the unpleasant fallout of this Taliban's return to Afghanistan. Okay, so because of this what happened? So it is one of the advantages that there is decreasing of violence across this LOC region. And even because of this New Delhi's presence from this Afghanistan, which also had been disappeared. Okay, so because of this here, so now we can see there is a calmness in this Kashmir along this LOC region. And if you are talking about some more important facts here, so here now we can go for good bargain. Okay, good bargain. I said this good bargain will not be useful for a longer run. And if you are talking about some more important things here is there is uh, there is also withdrawal of US from this uh, Afghanistan. So it is also one of the important favor thing that we can see from the Indian side here. So finally author says that so because of this combined geopolitical impact okay. So for example you can talk about US withdrawal from Afghanistan and as well as because of this Russia Ukraine war and expansion of this Chinese influence. So these are now which are mainly showing our uh, India that is New Delhi's geopolitical choices have been suddenly shrunk due to this Ukraine war. So now let's try to see next topic it is regarding sustainable development goals. So I want to say one thing so you have to remember those 17 sustainable development goals so that will become handy whenever you are writing your examination. So first of all today's homework is so please by had this 17 sustainable development goals. So this article is important from your governance point of view which mainly comes under your GS paper 2. Actually there is one important report which released so we are going to discuss that report that is sustainable development goals India index. So it is mainly released by Niti Aayog. So this will be a prelims fact. So now let us try to see this topic this will be important from both your mains and as well as your prelims. So if you see here context mainly says that Niti Aayog, Niti Aayog came up with this 2020, 2021 Sustainable Development Goals India Index. Okay, Sustainable Development Goals India Index. So it is a, which is a one of the important thing which mainly talked about implementation of United Nations Sustainable Development Goals in the country and as well as at the states and union territory levels. So if you see some details, actually this article which is mainly talking about Odisha success story. So it uh, mainly gives, so this index which mainly gives marks between 0 to 100 points to each region. Okay, so it is mainly based on significant improvement and as well as no state failed in the aspirant category and the lowest in the index. Okay, so here this index which mainly gave the marks 0 to 100 points to each region. Okay. And they will be focusing on successful improvement. Okay, so if you see this index, it mainly says that no state which mainly uh, which mainly working as good as aspirant category, and no state is in the lowest in the index as well. So all states they managed to score above fifty points in this SDG implementation. So about thirteen states they are mainly having a performer category. And 15 states they are having this front runner category. Okay. So these are the some important facts. So there is also we can see there is also improvement in the overall performance in the country towards this SDG implementation. And India stepped into front runner category as a total. So if you are talking about India where it did well. It did well in implementing of SDG 6, 7, 11 and 12. So what is this SDG 6? It mainly talking about clean water and sanitation. Six is clean water and sanitation. And seventh, it is about affordable and clean energy. And eleven, it is about sustainable, okay, sustainable cities. And twelve, it is about mainly, it is mainly talking about responsible, okay. So participation and everything, it is mainly talking about this 
sustainable development to well so these are sustainable development goals these are 17 the first one is no poverty we are talking about uh, zero hunger okay so it is more talking about health so everything gender equality so these are some important things which are mainly talked by this sustainable development goals and you have to remember this for sure okay so if we are talking about uh, case study here so this article which is mainly focused on odisha so if you are talking about odisha so what are the important areas they mainly focused so how it improved its sustainable development index okay so we are going to talk about that and we are also going to see what is the way forward so while the national ranking dropped but odisha state saw three point improvement in the overall score and finally it got score of 61 points so actually it topped in implementation of two important sustainable goals that is sustainable goal 13 and as well as 14 so 13 which mainly talks about uh, climate action and 14 where it is attacking about life underwater okay it mainly focused on three two important things that is sustainable development 13 and as well as sustainable development goal 14 so if you are from odisha you have to know about this details of your state's achievements in this sustainable development index and even if you are from other states also you have to know in which sustainable development goals your state is working okay and what is the score of your state it is also very important and this is uh, a homework for you people and let me know you are from which state okay you are from which state and what is the index what is the score in this uh, sustainable development goal index and in which sustainable development goals your state is going good okay, you have to know so you are from that state as an upsc aspirant you or you or uh, you should know that thing okay so you should know that in which areas your state which is mainly doing good and if you are talking about the first one that is climate action that is sustainable development goal 13 so which is mainly aiming to integrate climate change and disaster risk measures with sustainable natural resource management into national development strategies and what happened in this uh, sustainable development goal 13 so the score of this uh, odisha it is 70 points and it mainly focused on uh, integrated climate change disaster risk measures sustainable natural resource management etc and odisha which mainly managed to save about 120.07 tons of carbon dioxide per thousand population because they started using this led bulbs and also if you are talking about uh, life below water that is sustainable development goal 14 so it also aims to conserve ocean seas and marine resources by preventing uh, marine pollution and as well as illegal fishing practices so here odisha scored very good that is 82 points so state which mainly showed improved shore water quality and they saw about 3.19 percentage of increasing of mangroves in this region as well and even according to this asia and the pacific sdg progress report 2021 it mainly says that the asia pacific region which mainly showed decline or regression in the commitment of the goals 13 and 14 of sdgs so if you are talking about this odisha improvement in these goals it is a one of the important uh, thing which may be attributed because of several factors so first important thing which is mainly done by this odisha government here is they came up with this budgetary allocation especially to these sectors and they introduced climate budget for the first time in the, for the first time so why they came up with this climate budget so especially they want to focus on climate change so not only the single department that is environment department but they they mainly came up with focusing on this climate change in the number of departments including forest fisheries disaster management agriculture etc so in this way the first time they came up with this climate budget concept and odisha has been working the areas of climate since 2010 onwards okay and it also came up with state action plan on climate change as well and actually this state action plan on climate change which mainly revised for 2018 and 2013 under this implementation and actually here if you're talking about this sustainable development goals budget which mainly provides some cross department linkages so there will be linkage between the several departments for example forest department environment department and as well as uh, 
we can talk about disaster management uh, department agriculture department so everything which is interconnected right and it mainly shows the state commitments towards implementing of this uh, sdg 4 that mainly talks about quality education and sdg 10 which mainly talks about reducing of inequalities and sdg 2 it mainly talks about zero hunger as well so if we are talking about what is the way forward so way forward here is here Niti Aayog report which mainly says that there are some concerns which are present. So these concerns need to be addressed by the policy makers and we need to focus on gender equality and as well as zero hunger. So many other like uh, zero poverty, quality education, decent work and economic growth, industry, innovation, infrastructure and climate action, they need to a lot, they need a lot more work actually. And if you are talking about, so how can we achieve this? We can achieve this through public-private partnership. And even we need to have a collaboration between states, union territories, civil society organization, etc. And there is a need to aggressively implement this SDG, Sustainable Development Goals, localization efforts at the district level, at panchayat level, and as well as at the village level as well. So the only work at the community level can make SDG is truly achievable and as well as deliverable. So this is just of this topic and I hope it is very much clear. Now let us try to see next topic. Title says repo rate in India. So actually this repo rate is seen highly in news. So please be prepared with this topic before entering into your examination hall especially to write this prelims because there are high chance of getting question regarding this repo rate. So this article is important regarding GS paper 3 under economy. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So if you see context it mainly says that. So recently our central bank of India that is RBI, RBI took a surprise move that it mainly increased interest rate. Okay so monetary policy committee which mainly came up with the decision to increase this policy rate. So that is like to increase this repo rate of 40 basis point. To increase repo rate of 40 basis points and it will be with an immediate effect. Okay, so why this decision is mainly taken by RBI? So because there is external pressure that we can see. The most of this countries, so countries reserve banks, that means that is nothing but the central banks of the countries, they also came up with this increasing of interest rate. For example, you can talk about Federal Reserve that is a uh, USA's uh, central bank also that increases this interest rate. So not only this external pressures but also in India we are facing inflation. So there is increasing of inflation at the wholesale price and as well as the consumer price. So because of this here especially we need to decrease liquidity in the market. So how can we decrease liquidity in the market that is through increasing of interest rate. That mainly comes from this monetary policy of RBI. So what is repo rate? So repo rate is nothing but it is a one of the several direct and indirect instruments that mainly used by RBI to implement a monetary policy. So for example here we have RBI and let us see here we have a bank. So what happened bank if they are, get, if they are going to RBI? And if they are getting some money, okay, if they are borrowing money from the RBI, on this money they need to pay the interest rate. So whenever the banks are paying interest rate for the money they are borrowing from this RBI, that interest rate is called repo rate. So whenever interest rate is high means what happen banks, they will be getting less amount of money from the RBI. So that the banks will be having less amount of money to give the loans for the people. So because of this what happened? there is decreasing of liquidity in the market. So whenever there is decreasing of liquidity, it will help full mainly to decrease inflation in the market. So actually recently, there is one editorial we discussed that. So one important reason for the increasing of inflation in India, it is not because of this cost push inflation, but because of increasing of liquidity in the market. So we need to try to decrease the liquidity in the market, right? So this is about the what is the meaning of this RBI. So this is the thing which is mainly given here. 
So repo rate system which allows the central banks to control the money supply within the economies by increasing or decreasing the availability of the funds. So whenever there is increasing of this interest rate means we can decrease the money supply in the market. Whenever there is decreasing of interest rate means we can go for increasing of money supply in the market. So in this way here, so here this repo rate is one of the important system which mainly allows the central banks to control money supply within the economies. And here it also functions as monetary policy tools and it is also very much helpful to regulate the availability and as well as liquidity of the funds in the banking system as well. Okay, so here whenever there is changes in the repo rate which is mainly seen then that will also leads to decreasing or increasing of money supply in the market. So therefore it will be also having some impact on the consumption in the market as well. So this is about this topic in detail. And next topic it is about CDS that is Chief of Defense Staff. So this article is important from your defense point of view which mainly comes to your GS paper 3. So if you see context it mainly says that our union government is reassessing the concept of post of this CDS Chief of Defense Staff and as well as Department of Military Affairs. Okay so that is mainly leading to the delay in the appointment to the post. So if you are talking about details regarding the CDS, Chief of Defence Staff, he is the highest or the high military officer that oversees and he will be coordinating the works of these three services that is Army, Navy and as well as Air Force. And on the long term it mainly provides defence planning, management including manpower, equipment that we require and strategy that we need to follow etc. And most of the democracies, they have this CDS post, okay. So that will be very much helpful for immediate operational preoccupations at the individual military chiefs level. So if you are talking about what are the duties and functions of the CDS, so this will be important from your mains point of view. So if you are talking about the duties of this chief of defense staff, he mainly heads the department of military affairs in ministry of defense. And he also acts as a principal military advisor to Raksha Mantri, that is our defense minister on all tri service matters. And he also function as he will also functioning as a permanent chairman of chief of staff committee as well. And this one is he will administer tri service organizations or agency or commands. And to be the member of Defense Acquisition Council, it may he mainly chaired by this Raksha Mantri. And here he also functions as a military advisor to the nuclear command authority group and TDS which may who mainly comes uh, with the jointness in the operations, logistics, transport, training, support services, communications, repairs, maintenance etc here. So now let us try to talk about what is the need of this CDS. The first one is we need tri-service coordination. So for this tri-service coordination so this is very very important. So the creation of this CDS will eventually lead to the formation of tri-service theater commands and they are mainly intended to create vertical integration of three forces. Okay, the creation of the CDS will eventually lead to formation of tri-service theater commands. And next one is it will be helpful for single point military advisory. So CDS will be a single point military advisor to the government and also synergize long term planning and they will be focusing on procurements, training and logistics of three services. And next one is efforts saving. So this is expected to save money by avoiding duplication between the services. Okay. And next one is military diplomacy. So here today here CDS will be very important for supporting conventional diplomacy. Okay. That cannot be done by different services. So this is about this topic and now let's try to talk about a next article that is regarding Indian and French navies jointly patrol Indian Ocean. So actually 2020 we came up with this joint patrol in reunion islands. So this article which is mainly talking about this year in 2022. So India and French navies they jointly patrol in this Indian Ocean. So this article is important from your GS paper to under international relations. So if you see context it mainly says that the navies, the navies of India and France they concluded their 
second joint patrolling in the south southwestern indian ocean last week okay navies of india and as well as france they concluded their jo second joint patrolling in the southwestern indian ocean region last week so they also came up with this australian p8 maritime patrol aircraft which is also expected in india next month on a reciprocal visit on a reciprocal visit so we are also expecting that australian p8 okay p8 maritime patrol aircraft will also come and here this uh, operations or this uh, naval thing or this exercise which is mainly focusing on expanding of this maritime surveillance and as well as anti submarine warfare cooperation in this indian ocean region so they are mainly focusing on maritime surveillance and as well as anti submarine warfare cooperation so if you see some details it mainly says that indian navy indian navy p8i aircraft was deployed from this french island of a uh, of reunion to carry out joint surveillance and as well as patrolling operations so here the two french foreign class surveillance frigates and as well as the florial and naivos they took part in this deployment and they are mainly especially focusing on anti smuggling so the smuggling of drugs it is one of the important challenge that we are facing especially in the western national well eastern coast of india so here they are mainly focusing on anti smuggling okay so nothing that so here this article says that noting that it is a second time france and india they carried out this joint patrolling out of law reunion okay this thing which mainly said in this article so this p8i aircraft which mainly engages with this french warships and that will be helpful in operating the regions uh, okay regions under surveillance missions okay in area to enhance maritime safe, sec, safety and as well as security in this region so if we are talking about some facts regarding this p8i aircraft so it is a boeing okay it is a boeing p8a poseidon so it mainly designed for long range anti submarine warfare and anti surface warfare as well and it is mainly focusing on intelligence surveillance and as well as reconnaissance missions and this p8 indian air indian variant it is mainly referred to as p8i okay so here yeah, here we came with the ordering of 12 aircrafts so uh, as of 2020 india received about 8 okay so this is about this topic and if you are talking about where is this france so here we have mediterranean sea here we have north atlantic sea here we have english channel so this part it is france so which are the countries sharing the borders with this france here we have spain here we have italy switzerland luxembourg and as well as belgium so these are the countries which are mainly sharing boundary with this france and now let us try to see next topic this regarding stronger india nepal ties must to face emerging challenges says our prime minister so this article is important from your international relations point of view which mainly comes to your gs paper too so i want to give you a small homework to you students that is to differ so which are the areas of cooperation between india and nepal so if you say context it mainly says that our prime minister narendra modi he referred to common culture heritage of india and as well as nepal and said that nepalese people they were equally happy because of the building of this uh, or construction of this uh, ram temple in this ayodhya so if you see details it mainly says that he mainly came with addressing a gathering in this lumbini on the account of this buddha purnima and at that time our prime minister he mainly spoken about the commonalities of faith and as well as traditions in the both the sides and in this context our prime minister also said that a stronger friendship between these two countries is very much necessary for dealing of the challenges which are emerging before the world and he mainly said that yes we are mainly focusing for the conserving of this ancient culture and as well as civilization of nepal so here in this context they also said that they are going to uh, go for construction of india international center for buddhist center heritage in lumbini so once this is completed then this will provide a world class facility okay it mainly welcomes pilgrims as well as tourists across the world so this is about this a uh, topic and now let's try to see yesterday's questions so first question is regarding parliamentary government in the in the context of india so which are the principles or imply implied a constitutional uh, in institutionally in this parliamentary government so here you need to identify incorrect statements so members of cabinets or the members of parliament it may or it may not be 
Next one is ministers hold office till end of conference in parliament. It is not parliament, it is Lok Sabha. And cabinet which is mainly headed by the head of the state. That is not president, it is by the prime minister. So correct option will be 1, 2 and 3. So these three are incorrect statements. And the next question is regarding article 368. So the parliament under this article 368 amend any part of constitution including fundamental rights but not affecting the basic structure of constitution. Yes. This is the thing which mainly said by Keshwan and the Bharati case of 1973. And next one is the case of constitutional amendment bill. The president is bound to give his assent or his or her assent. Yes. Okay, there will be no veto. And next one is there is no provision for joint sitting in case of deadlock in this constitutional amendment bill. Yes. So whenever there is deadlock which is seen in the ordinary bill, okay, then only we will be having this joint sitting, okay. So let me know which article of Indian Constitution talks about this joint sitting. So the option will be 1, 2 and 3. And these are the today's question. The first one is regarding veto and second one is regarding ordinance. So these are very, very simple questions. Try to answer these questions and give me your answer in the comment box. And I want to make a small announcement. So we came with this pen drive course for your entire foundation for your 2023 and 2024. This course is absolutely beneficial and try to join this course as soon as possible. And if you have any queries regarding this course, so please call us on this number 8074765513. Okay, and if you want to watch any demo video, so please visit our website strathorsciencecademy.com. There you can register if you are going for our website for the first time. And after that, you can see the demo videos. That is three demo videos in each and every subject. And now let us try to see today's Hindu newspaper PDF. So before that, if you want to get this PDF, so please join the Telegram channel. So in this Telegram channel, we are mainly uploading this PDF every day. And now let us try to see today's Hindu newspaper PDF. So this is our Hindu and the date here is May 70, 2023. And this is Delhi edition. So first topic I discussed about this India Nepal ties. And next topic is regarding part of mask sealed on claim of linga find so what happened in this nyanwapi mosque already it is in it is in a controversy here so what happened so in this uh, in this mosque especially in the tank so they found that shivaling so because of this again there is some issue which is which is mainly going on in this uh, nyanwapi temple so we have to follow this and next topic it is regarding sweden makes nato bid official says entering new era so actually you know that Finland and Sweden they want to join for this uh, membership of NATO and Sweden on Monday officially announced that it will apply for this NATO membership as a deterrent against this Russia's aggression and it is going to enter into the new era okay new era as it reverses this two centuries of military non-alignment movement. So here government which mainly decided to inform this NATO had uh, uh, said that Sweden wants to become a member of LA, member of uh, member alliance of this NATO. So this is the thing, and you can know about some facts regarding this NATO. Already we discussed number of times. And next topic is regarding endosulfan victims. So actually, this endosulfan is one of the pesticides which is mainly used uh, for the cashew nut. Okay, especially this is mainly used for the cashew nut plantations in this Kerala, and that led to severe uh, impact on the health of the people. So what happened in the 2017 judgments of Supreme Court, it mainly said that government need to provide compensation for this victims, but till now it is not done. Okay, so because of this, this is a news. And if you move on to city page here, you can see here SDMC, that is South Delhi Municipal Corporation that mainly conducts special anti-larval anti drive here. So this article is very, very important. You can also read this topic once. And if you go forward, Okay, if you go forward, there is one uh, image regarding this Buddha Purnima. You have to refer some facts regarding this Buddha Purnima. And this one is new systems which mainly delay MG Narega wage payments. Especially, we came up with this mandatory implementation of this national uh, national mobile monitoring system for this uh, na MG Narega scheme. Actually, without addressing some various technical issues. So, we have some, uh, some uh, technical issues. So, even though we came up with this, so because of this, that mainly led to delaying of new uh, payments under this MG Narega scheme okay and if you move forward in this editorial page I discussed about this India's geopolitical options and there is one article regarding this uh, technical higher education so you can read this article by your own that is not much important from your UPSC point of view 
and next topic it is about uh, achieving of sustainable development goals i discuss this topic and if you see the data point here so it mainly talking about open defecation free okay so what happened so we came with the swachh bharat abhiyan okay so on 2nd october 2019 all the villagers and as well as states uh, 36 states and union territories they are mainly declared as op uh, open defecation free but however the data which mainly published by this national family health survey it mainly show, showed that yes 25% of the rural households they are mainly defecating in the open places so you can see that uh, report once and this topic it is about report in india i discuss this topic i discuss regarding the cds uh, cdf topic as well and next one it is about seo terror meet stars official from china and pakistan russia and delhi so we need to follow this topic once this meeting is done we will be getting a number of articles regarding highlights there we can see about this and so is border villages migration is a worry so especially india which is mainly sharing border border with a number of countries so here between the countries and the countries so we will be having some border states so from this border states here migration will be seen so it is one of the important challenge which is mainly facing okay and if you move forward india and french navies we discuss this topic and here in this news page you can see monsoon advances over this andaman islands so this article is very very important because if you see here in the northern hemisphere we see india is present and whenever winds are moving in this directions so actually the this low pressure area or itc which is mainly present over this 23 and 1/2 degrees north so after once this winds which are mainly crossing this uh, okay equator they will be moving towards right side because of this coriolis effect so now this article says that monsoon which mainly advances over this andaman islands so the southwest monsoon has advanced over this andaman and nicoba islands on monday okay so this is the thing which mainly said by this imd so now let us try to see some important articles like report flags risk of fortified rice for some so actually fortified rice means we are taking rice and we are adding some minerals and as well as vitamins for that rice especially in this fortified rice we are adding iron okay that will be helpful mainly to come out of this anemia and some other diseases actually we are mainly going for this distribution of this iron fortified rice through government schemes it is a it is one of the important step to curb this uh, anemia and as well as uh, uh, some other diseases which are related to this iron deficiency and we are mainly focusing uh, to stop okay so to uh, we are mainly focusing to prevent this uh, anemia and as well as thalassemia tuberculosis sickle cell anemia etc in the people so what happened now the some reports which are mainly saying that so because of this fortified rice so there is excess iron which is mainly seen in the body so because of this there is also some side effects which are mainly seen regarding this fortified rice as well and if you move forward there is nothing much important in this business page sorry in this world page and in, in this business page you can see there is one article that is rate increases may not cool a price gain price gains a driver by war and this topic it is about chinese economy cool sharply on lockdowns so these are the some important things apart from that you can also see this tea plantation so tea plantation activity which mainly hit by the cost of uh, coal so there is increasing of uh, coal price so that it also affecting the plantation okay tea plantation productivity as well so these are the some important articles that appeared in our today's newspaper i hope you enjoyed this lecture so please subscribe to rathore science academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos thank you so much